Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Badger, the Hopping Hare. Um, pale Ale, 4.4%. Four four um, frisky Legs, Amber Eyes, Hedgehoppers and Skidaddlers. Though they're known by dozens of delicious different names, when hares pour onto Poor Bet Ridge each spring to hop, box and dance till dawn they live up the fame of the name we know best the mad march hair <sighs> don't really need to read that um a refreshingly light oppy pale ale a marriage of aromatic citrus amarillo and cascade ops and the finish english flag on a barley we'll give it a pour Been a while since I've had a badger's beer. Um, definitely smell the hops. Wow, straight away. A different type of hops to a lot of the craft beer hops as well. So lovely, amber colour, good lacing and carbonation there. Nice white head, good sized head as well. Um, been a while since I've done a, a Badger's beer. Um, I was a bit underwhelmed with Tanglefoot last time I tried it. Um, but you know, as we all know ourselves, you know, you can review something on a day where you know you just might not have it that day for that certain type of beer. Which is why I like to do, now and again I'll do a re-review, just to make sure. Because uh, I'll give you an example, Marston's Ode Roger. I drank it before I started doing any reviews last year. Beautiful, 7.4%, absolutely lovely. Then I thought, I'll do a review when I started doing, actually, videoing reviews. And drank it, and uh, started off great. Got to the end, did not like it. And, uh, as much anyway. And then I, so I re-reviewed it at Christmas time uh, in warm conditions, and I tell you what, it was the amber nectar that day. So, as beer reviewers, beer reviewers can have off days, as can reviewers of any product, I suppose. And and with that in mind, also beers can have off days, can't they? You know, might not always be the exact perfect same drink you've had before so on ratebear.com it's got an average of 2.96 out of 5 from 225 ratings um have a quick drink nice nice fruit in this trip um so on the nose See, the nose has actually died to death now, but when I first poured it out, I got a lovely smell of hops and, you know, aromatic smell. Nah, can't smell anything. What does it say it is? Because, uh, refreshingly light, oppy pale ale. Yeah, it doesn't really give any anything away. What I will say is, it's a very nice drinkable beer, you know. Uh, first review on the rate beer, 2.9 out of 5. Clear golden, decent white head. Hoppy aroma, definitely. Taste is hops followed by a more watery body. Very subtle bitterness, drinkable. Another one, 3.2 out of 5. Aroma is malts, caramel, citrus and notes of grass. See, I got the hops, which would be the citrus. Um, malts, yeah, you do get malt. Caramel, no. Grass, no. Pours a clear amber body with a white head, yeah. Taste is mild, bitter with bready malts, caramel, earth, and citrus. Different, and um, I'm not tasting earth, but I'm a gardener. Well balanced, refreshing, enjoyable. So, last one 3.5 out of 5. It's subtle, almost tasteless, not overly hoppy. 
mild oaty taste and leaves a bitter aftertaste. Could drink a lot of this stuff as it isn't very gassy and tastes like a lager. So, um, yeah, it's uh, the aroma definitely got more hot. It was hoppy to start off with, and then it kind of uh, died back. Um, I can understand why. So even though it's hoppy here, it's not hoppy as in like craft beer hoppy, that sort of hoppy. It's not, um, it's not something that's going to, you know, it's too intensely hoppy. It's just nice, pleasant hoppy. The malt is in the background. Like one of the reviewers says, the taste, it's not overly tasty, but it's not. It's, it's basically like a, a beer version of lager. Which isn't a bad thing, really. On a, you know, it's very refreshing. And the further I get down, the, the more it should come to me. Ah. So I don't work. Mowing, come home, mowing. But uh, God's looking there. Ah. Hopefully we'll start getting some decent weather again. I mean, what is it now? Coming, it's the end of May, end of April, today, uh, today, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, so May 1st, 2nd. Yeah, so we're into May already. This year is flying by. Um, this week, Lidl have got a beer festival on. Now, um, I'll do a news post about it later when I've charged my phone. And go through some of the beers available. But Scotland. Ah, Scotland have got by far the better beers. We have been robbed. I'm not joking. You look at some of the Scottish beers on offer. They're fantastic. The beers in England and Wales. They're ne I mean they're alright. But they're nowhere near as good. Robbed. I don't know why they don't have all 20 odd beers all, all together. Let everybody you know. And see which one you know but good to see a beer festival first first one of the year really so hopefully the supermarkets will follow suit as well the likes of Audi and that you know we need more of these beer festivals uh, if any as an excuse to stock up on bears at Yan's had did a garden for a friend um, my daughter's friend yesterday so I've got some extra spondulix coming in and I intend to go to somewhere like Sainsbury's and buy a lot of miniature wines. Um, I'm not really a fan of buying miniature wines because you're not getting your money's worth. But uh, for review purposes it's great because you can you know, buy a load and uh, for 25 quid I can get as many as like 15 probably for that price. Um, yeah, because Sainsbury's do them a bit cheaper, and my son gets discounts as well. And uh, yeah, start cracking a few uh, wine reviews out because it's, it's, you know, it's uh, uh, I've been a bit lacking on the wine review from. But anyway, back to this. Very nice. Um, Badger, some fantastic, iconic br brands there. Tangle for obviously. I didn't give it a good as rating last time. You know, it didn't hit the spot for me last time, but that's still, it's still a good beer. Uh, Thirsty Ferret, very good. Golden Champion, one of the best golden beers and fruity beers that you'll taste. Golden Glory, I'm not sure if it's still being produced. I've not seen it for a while, so I hope it's not been took off or completely. Uh, as soon as I see it, I'll buy it because I want to do a review of it. A lovely peach and melon beer. Um, Badger's the Cranbourne Poacher, or Poacher's Choice, as most people will probably know it. Another excellent beer uh, they've got the partridge beer that they did and uh, there must be others that I'm forgetting some very good beers one day I'll spend some money and start um, buying beers in from direct from the breweries and you know but you do pay a bit more from the brewery direct than you do in the supermarket you know it's because supermarkets can buy at a much bigger rate than we can So the maltiness is coming through now. A bit of hops is definitely the bitterness and the aftertaste. Nice, it's all very pleasant, all very um, drinkable.
still lacing, st you know, still carbonating from the bottom. Still got a nice head on it, even, you know, over halfway down the glass, which is good. You know, um, some of these where the head disappears and stays disappeared, you know, flat beers, it's a bit... I mean, I'm a home brewer, so if my beer goes flat, then I'm not worried, but I'm not, I'm not selling it commercially. And uh, I use the cheapest methods to brew it. I don't use, uh, I just use granulated sugar, you know. Although I've got some damn good beers, you know. Easter brew, chocolate star, ooh, uh, cherry beer, um, is it brew firm? Yeah, the only cherry beer you can get, and that's awesome. I need a plum beer kit. Um, even if it's a Belgian beer kit, as long as it tastes of plum. I mean, for me, I'd like to do a plum porter. But I just, you know, it's definitely something on the to-do list. We all have to-do lists of what you want to do. And uh, just recently, I've got a Sauvignon Blanc kit here. Uh, that's just about finished. I've popped my head in the early just to make sure, see what it's looking like. It's clear in itself. When it's clear in itself, it's coming to the end of uh, fermentation. Been bubbling, bubbling away like a trooper anyway. I've got an orange wine kit to the side. That's still bubbling away quite a bit. That's you know, just bubbled at the back of me. And then here on the floor, I've got the kit that I fell over with the other day. And that's a Primitivo wine kit from Wineworks, a part of Love, you know, Love Brewing's brand. And again, another one that I've not seen anywhere. Um, but I need to let these kits mature before I do proper reviews. I don't want to downgrade the review because I'm not giving it a month to mature. Good wines need to mature. So, really enjoying this, going down the tree. It's taking a while to drop it down as well, simply because it's very nice. Um, This is what it is with this, it's, you know, it's a little bit hoppy. Hopping hair. Um, it's not saying that it's like a hot, like Saddler's, bless them. I, I like Saddler's beers, but they bought that hot bomb. And I'm telling you, um, <laughs> I don't know what they did on that bottle that I drank. There was no bomb. It was more of a, a wet fart, you know. But um, this is not saying, it just says hopping hair, so it's, it's more like, it, like it's a, a little bit of hops, but uh, nothing too much. And it's perfectly drinkable that way, you know. This is mainstream beer drinking stuff, you know. Um, whereas some of the craft beers are not aimed at the mainstream, you know. Uh, they're aimed predominantly at craft beer enthusiasts. Uh, where I mean, and that's the, you know where they're aiming. You know, you're never going to see most of the craft beers you'll see on the market. You'll never see them in a four pack or in crates because they're not really made for that. They're not really going for that market. The only people who've um, on a national scale who've tipped that balance are the likes of Punk uh, Brewdog and their their range. You know, a lot of their range comes in four packs, six packs, and that. And, uh, you know, they, craft beer, they've gone to the masses. Took them a while to get going, mind you, but, uh, you know, it's definitely there. You look in every supermarket now, and most of them do brew dog, and they do the four packs, six packs, and even cases. To me, a very good session, pale ale. Uh, 4.4% in that range. So to break it down, amber pour, good carbonation lacing, good white head on it, hop aroma. When you pour in it, a great good hop aroma. Sadly though, when you get to your nose, you, you know, you struggle to smell it. In the taste, a um, little bit of hops, nothing too much, you know. So if you don't like hops, you'll still be all right because it's, it's pleasant. Maltiness in there. Um, a definite bitterness in the back end as it's going down, you know, and at the end, you know, really nice. Uh, a good effort from Badger. So, out of five, oof. 4.3 out of five, that is a, you know, it's a damn good beer.
been sat there for ages because you know I have to be in the mood to do certain beers. You look at some and you think, I'm doing that today. But yeah, very good beer. Thanks for watching. See you soon.